Welcome along to Obsolete Fight Talk and Referee's Corner with the gentleman, Daniel Movahedi. How are we doing, guys? Good evening. What's the story, Dan? Um, Dan, referees being in the limelight this week. Um, hectic weekend, the fights. But there's two issues that we want to get your expert opinion on. Um, no prizes for guessing. It happened in Gdansk. It involved the lightweight champion, Conor McGregor. Um, and Mark Goddard <laughs> basically stopped the fight for a moment just to tell Conor to be professional and um, basically go back to his position. So we were talking about this on the actual show this week. Uh, obviously, Fight Talk 86. Go and check it out if you haven't already. Um, what is... Because I was saying there's certain rules that you have to follow cage side. So you're the man with the, the infinite knowledge to it. So break it down. What, what has to happen? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think even God I touched on this. And, you know, corner men are there. You have three corner men. Um, uh, and for a title fight, you have four corner men usually in the UFC. And look, if you're not the cornerman, you can't be walking around around that cage area giving instructions, especially to, you know, as everyone knows, Connor's good friends with Artem, yeah. um, giving instructional uh, um, stuff to, in the cage, you know, for him for him to try to test out. So, you know, even cornermen have to stay seated within an area. That's where you have a commission behind them, make sure they stay seated, stay there. I was surprised, especially at a level of, like, UFC, that they didn't, no, no one actually told him to sit down and, yeah. For Goddard to be able to spot him out of the corner of his eye, and even mostly obviously hearing him as well, seeing him walking around and etc. Obviously, he did the right thing, called time, and um, told him to go and sit back down, which again Connor acknowledged and, and he did. Um, and you know, if if if, he, if Connor was in his seat, like Kate side, and he was shouting from Kate side, that's not a problem. You're sitting in your seat, you're not in the corner's position, but had you be going round and shouting instructions. Obviously, it's not within it's within the rules that you only have three cornermen. You're allocated cornermen. I've had it before where you've had tried a cornerman trying to swap. You have someone else coming in going, "Oh no, I'm the actual cornerman." I'm like, "Well, you're not the three guys who walk down with him as his cornerman." Too late, my friend. You know, you missed the boat. You can't just decide, oh, "I'm going to swap and change. I'm going to be his cornerman for round two, etc." So these are the things that we we have to deal with sometimes as referees. And very well spotted by Goddard. But is it, you know, fair? Goddard spotted and Goddard, but. but should Goddard have to be refereeing outside the cage as well? Should that not have been the commissioner's job? Uh, yeah, you're right. It, it should have been the commissioner's job. But, you know, I think someone clearly pointed out, you know, McGregor, innit? Would you, you know, <laughs> I mean, obviously, I, 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 you know, someone who knows Goddard personally, he don't give a fuck who you are. You know, the rules are rules. And same, man, it's so, so that's the way it should be as well, you know. Um, rules are rules but yeah you're right it should have been the commissioner's job I don't know by the same time the commissioner's got their job to do as well looking at the cornerman but I don't know they can't just get up and leave but I don't know I don't know how, how that one would have worked I'm sure they would have had a meeting about it afterwards as, as a debrief with the commission team and see what the situation was there so yeah and again Mark Goddard very busy man last very, night very very busy man um, there was a bit of a controversial fight to say it in the, the <laughs> easiest way but uh, yeah. Oh, shit, but came down. <laughs> the fight went to shit. Uh, K- KSW 40 last night in Dublin Street Arena. I say last night, you're listening to this, on Sunday evening. Um, Norman Park taking on Matthias Gamrot, where round one, there. Uh, you've, you've seen the fight, Dan? Yes, I have. Okay, so round one, there was a, a low blow. Um, groin strike, Gamrot kicked uh, Park. Uh, Gadar stopped the fight, allowed uh, Norman to recover. Then there was an eye poke in the first round. Uh, again, fight was stopped. Goddard spoke briefly with Gamrod. He signaled to him just to keep yeah. your hands closed. Um, second round uh, started. Absolute war of a fight. And I keep describing it as a corkscrew uh, eye poke. He sort of put the hand in and twisted his Sounds hand like as he done it. Sounds like a pro wrestling enough. Um, yeah. And the fight uh, at this time then, all hell broke loose in the cage as um, the fight was waved off. Where the two teams came in, uh, commissioners were there, doctors. Uh, at this time, Park was sort of shouting at Gamrot's corner. Obviously, with what happened in the first fight that went down, this happened now. Emotions were high. The emotions were high. Uh, Norman Park pushed one of um, Gamrot's t- uh, teammates, corner men, and a second corner man just off uh, Norman Park's right hand side. What you can only describe as a sucker punch landed uh, straight left on Norman Park's chin and by the way Norman Park wore it like a champion <laughs> um, but what we like first of all let's 
talk about the actual fight. The low blow and the two eye pokes. Potentially, should Goddard not have been looking at maybe, especially with the second eye poke, be looking at disqualification. Uh, just either a DQ or taking a point at that time when the fight then went to a no contest. Why wasn't it ruled the DQ? Well, he could he couldn't have taken a point away because the doctor told him that he, he waved it off anyway, so he couldn't have taken yeah. a point away. But who knows? Maybe he, he would have taken uh, a point away if the fight had continued. I don't know. Um, but looking back on it myself, I mean, I, at the end of the day, it's down to the discretion of the referee if it was intentional or unintentional eye poke. And from what it looked like, it for me, if I'm absolutely honest, it didn't look intentional. It looked like as he was as he was pushing away, yes, his hands, his fingers were extended, but as he was pushing away, it wasn't as if he was standing right in front of him and going straight into the eyes. I understand he got an eye poke, etc. The thing that you know, uh, people are asking as well, why didn't it go to the scorecards? Well, it wasn't two completed rounds for it to for it enable it to go to a scorecards. I was that's what would have happened. Um, again, it's down to the referee's discretion if he feels that it was intentional or unintentional. Um, and I think, as you see on the video, you can see Goddard talking to the other fighter and saying to him, look, I, I understand it was unintentional, but again, warning him again, you know. Look, no referee wants to take points away willy-nilly. We understand that it's human nature, it's fighters. It's, you know, you, you do it's your reaction. Same with people holding the cage, grabbing the cage. I say in a rules talk, you know, it's, it's natural reaction that you, if someone's taking you down, you want to grab something, you know. And, you know, we try to give the hand our most ample opportunities we can before we decide to take a point away. But like I said, God, I obviously felt like that. It wasn't um, intentional, it was unintentional, and that's why it ended up being a no contest. It, um, but the, the, the thing that we, we, we were talking about previously about commissioners is that well, how, how the commissioner should have been in the sooner before even Norman was able to go and approach um, uh, his opponent regarding the eye poke or saying whatever he had to say and obviously they, like you said that flared up the tension and when the cornerman and all that come and he went over again he was like how many times you know again if Goddard wasn't there in between them <laughs> to, to shove him away he could have kicked off a hell of a lot more as well you know um, but yeah so that that's the explanation of the, on, of the eye poke on the disqualification on taking points um, should there be something more I don't know, outlined on when a referee should take a point. I know it's it's probably a difficult uh, question to answer because how do you how do you put a, a rule on it? Like it, it is kind of it's more. Well, there there, on there the is. Eye. I mean, there there is a rule on it. We say look, uh, if now now obviously if if you punch or if you have your arms extended, your fingers are pointing mm-hmm. extended rather than facing upwards. Mm-hmm. Um, we can we we have the ability of not just keep warning you. We we can call time and and deduct a point. Um, leading up to that second one, I mean, not the crowd was so bloody loud. I couldn't. I don't even if know if Mark was mic'd up or not. Yeah. I I didn't see him give him any warnings, and I don't think there was reasons to give him any warnings for the eye poke. So there was nothing that was like, uh, he led up to, you know, he's giving him warnings, 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 and then it happened. Then for him to take a point away, um, no, you know it. It's there, but again, like I said, it's down to that. I've been in that situation where people have gone to me, referees poked him in the eye, why didn't you take a point away? But, you know, if you feel like there's no malice behind it and it wasn't intentional, then then you don't, you know. It's, it's down to the sole discretion of the referee. What do you expect to happen with um, Gamrot's corner, man? I think his name is Boris, but uh, I'm not, yeah, I'm I not so sure. Uh, someone else asked me that, and I, I, I don't know this, but I've kept, when I was reading through some of the threads, someone said they the the thirty percent purse deduction and a two year ban for the cornerman or some shit like that. I don't know. Although that's what it was suggesting that it should happen. I'm not. I'm not sure that's something I come across. But I do think the whole team should be um, not not just the fighter, but a whole team. Even even the all the cornermen yeah. maybe should have a have a couple of fight ban. I don't know. It's it's not a nice one because we had it with the. What boxing fight was it when the uncle went up to the fight oh, and yeah. sucker punched oh, him? I can't remember their names, but yeah, yeah, yeah I remember that. Do you remember that? Yeah. And, and he's banned. He's banned from the whole, you know, from that state of of, of attending any of the fights or yeah. that fighter in that state. Um, you know, again, it's not nice, and I think it's, 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 it, does, it doesn't look good for the sport. But I'm sure, you know, KSW being a great promotion that they are, they they will implement something on 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 that uh, on that individual. Certainly, you know, people's if if it is true that they should that they're going to deduct thirty percent of 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 the fighters' purse, is it a fighter's fault? Not really, but yeah, it is his cornerman. I, I don't know how that, how that one will work out, you know. And by deduction, does Park get that thirty percent? I don't know. That's down to the <laughs> that's down to the individual. Yeah, I don't know. So. I guess you got to think that he's taking an extra shot yeah. in a fight that he wasn't even meant to be in. Yeah. <laughs> Park, it was like a Royal Rumble. 
It was. Royal Rumble. Inside and, and outside and, the cage. And, and, well, that, that's, the, that's the sad thing about it. And, like, you know, I always say in Rules Talk, again, let's make it clear, it wasn't the fighter who calls this with the sucker punch. It was his cornerman. Yeah. But how fighters act or react inside the cage naturally it escalates outside the cage so the fans and all that get peed off etc and yeah. something's got to be said and I know you was in say it was a couple of rows behind where you guys were sitting you know that's that's all it takes I had it on the weekend on another show on, on Saturday same thing you know it seemed to be something was in the water this weekend yeah. you know maybe that storm brought something tell you what <laughs> brought was in something the water. around you know and it's a shame because it, it really kills the, it kills the mood a little bit you know um, I'm going to complete my joke even though everyone heard it I'll tell no, you what's no, in the water Vodka. Huh? <laughs> Dan is said brilliant. Do it again. Am I going to do it again? Yeah. Tour time's lucky. I'll tell you what's in the water. Go Vodka. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Too much of it. I think they've yeah. drawn uh, that shit dry. Well, you know original. what? It's something that I, I'm actually surprised I didn't mention this um, on the live show. I actually think because of... I think the three arena has a lot to answer for with the bars and stuff like oh, that. Yeah. I'd be interested to yeah. see, you know... There was a lot of drunk people there, and a lot drunk, of drunk people. people I mean, yeah. overly drunk. I yeah, don't mean yeah, messy you drunk. know merrily yeah. having a point, having a sing song. There was messy drunk people there, and I honestly think that the bars on the, both sides as well. Yeah, not, have yeah. Because yeah, like, oh, I, I, I know, I, I know. Didn't mention no, no, because I know a lot. I know a lot of people are saying that it was a lot of the the Polish uh, uh, crowd that kicked yeah. off, but there was both sides. There yeah. was there was both yeah. sides, and but there was a lot of messy drunk like, people. I, at the I, I was at Dan. I was at a, a comedy show in the Tree Arena on the Friday night. And I know yeah. when I went in, the bars closed when the performance started. They opened when there was an interval, and they, they closed yeah. when the performance started again. Um, it looked like the beer was flowing all night. Now, that's we are dealing with adults, but I just think with the environment that it was, uh, you'd hate to say you can't have a drink, but I just think they were serving people to beyond drunkness. Yeah. And yeah. I think that yeah. has a lot to happen, or has a lot of responsibility to what happened as well. Maybe I'm just going to put a final point on that. I've been to events where they've done what they, what you just said. They closed the bar, had had its fights, and opened their the interval. But then you've got the flip side to that. During that interval, people going right. I've got 20 minutes. Give me 10 shots of vodka <laughs> and a couple of beers. Let me neck it down. And before you know it, even more pissed. You know, it's it's, it's not. Uh, it is what it is, isn't it? It, it is it's, what it is. You it's know, all it an, it's an education process. We need to educate these people on on just, safe drink. I just yeah. don't understand why people have to go out and fight. Go out and have, like, you're I know, it's insane. Go and it's watch insane. the fights and, yeah. like, let your bleeding, whatever your hormones go out from Like, the nobody, the nobody wants to watch go you and have fight. A good we want to watch the people in yeah. the cage fight. The, go the out train and have a good people time and sport. Just don't be a dickhead. Yes. <laughs> Dan, it must be the winter. The beard is back. Yes, it is. It is. Thank you. That's that sound weird for some reason. Why? I don't know. Is it sound weird? It sounded like rehearsed. It sounded like you're like no. A, he always has the little, the little. Must be the winter. He, the he always has. Back. He always had the, the Walter White. Yeah, yeah, the Walter White. He yeah. always had the Walter White cooking met. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you're gone full beard, full blown. Must be winter. I am. The countdown to um, Dan being in uh, back in Dublin is upon us. Oh yeah, we're not too far yes. away, Dan. We're gonna have a nice little obviously fight talk lunch. Yeah. I'm going to have a chat. Yeah. I'm going to have a moment. But Dan, as always, it's great getting your insight. I swear to God, one of these times when we have a referee's corner, it won't be about your good friend, Mark Goddard. <laughs> uh, it, it just so happens that Mark Goddard is... is probably... uh, you, you know, he's, he, he's there and everywhere, isn't he? So he's, and he does a good job. But yeah, man, I'm glad, I'm glad I got to come and clear a couple of things up with you guys and, and for the fans, especially with, regarding the eye poke and regarding, you know, how, it's not just in the cage the referee's got to keep the eye out. It's also the outside of the cage as well. Dan, so, yeah. it's an absolute pleasure talking pleasure. to you as always my man enjoy your evening and uh, thank you guys catch up glad soon. we got it done take care bye bye the gentleman himself Daniel Mova Hedy uh, this has been Referee's Corner with Daniel um, so again if you haven't checked out the full show go and check it out obviously Fight Talk 86 this has been Referee's Corner I've been O'Keefe he's been Palin he was Mova Hedy sound <laughs>